CataractCoach.com. The prior vitrectomy hit the capsule. Now, how do you complete the cataract surgery with a toric IOL? Tough case here. Now, patient had damage there. You can see it on the posterior capsule. Very important to check that. Patient had four prior vitrectomies, four of them. First one for a detachment, then had another uh, retinal detachment, and therefore had a repeat vitrectomy and sclerobuckle. Then had a third vitrectomy for silicone oil to be placed inside the eye. And then had a fourth vitrectomy to remove the silicone oil. Wow, now that doctor should probably watch retinaral.com. It's coming less than a month. Here's a KDB procedure being performed because the patient also has steroid-induced glaucoma. You can imagine all those retina surgeries, this patient was probably on topical steroids for a year. KDB going both directions here. That's the Kahoot dual blade, getting that opened up very nicely. Now, it's time for the cataract surgery. Important to get a good erectus there. You may be putting in a torque lens, sure, if you want to, but you, what if the capsule rips open? Then you may be putting in a three-piece lens with optic capture. So important to get that five-millimeter erectus done. That looks fantastic. Looking good now. Watch the high section carefully. Here's where you can get in trouble. Slow, slow, slow. You really got to treat this basically like a posterior polar because the capsule where it was hit by the vitrector is for sure damaged. It's for sure weak. It may just rip open. You don't know. Hopefully, there was some fibrosis or healing of it afterwards so it's not so weak. The lens is rotating, though, and it doesn't look like the capsule blew out, at least not yet. Let's watch the FACO technique here. We have obviously sped up the video. So groove down the middle here a little bit. That looks good. And then another groove. And this may be a good idea to do some grooving and then maybe just create two large halves, bring each half up. I'd be very cautious about operating too much in that capsule bag. Right? Think about it. You know the capsule and the poster capsule is weakened. There's the, the split there of the nucleus. Hopefully the capsule didn't split also. And now, okay, chop, bring those pieces up, get them out of the bag. It's not that dense of a cataract to get the pieces up there. Just watch carefully now. If the poster capsule splits open, this patient has no vitreous left. So what's in the back of the eye? It's just aqueous. So if this capsule splits open, boy, this nuke is going to drop fast. So here's where I'd want to get that nuke up, up, up out of the bag. Put viscoelastic behind it. Get an extra little buffer there. Hopefully tamp it on any breaks. But so far it's operating okay. Look at that iris bounce, by the way, because of prior vitrectomy. This is a tougher case to do. As you know, per, a prior vitrectomy eye, you got to be very cautious here. Because you don't have any support holding, like the anterior hyaline face, supporting the back of the posterior capsule. Now, injecting viscoelastic, I like that. Have the viscoelastic as your sacrificial barrier there. And just get that last nuclear piece out, chopper in good position. And, ooh, looks good. Hey, remember, check out our podcast, Top Podcast in All of Ophthalmology. I promise you're going to love it. You're going to learn how to be a more successful surgeon everywhere where you find podcast service. Now, back to our case here. Here is the cleanup of the cortex. Now, Gosh, what do you do with the bag there? Now, the good news is there's no vitreous, right? So you can't get vitreous prolapse. So maybe try to take out all the cortex that's not at that scarred spot and then maybe address the scarred spot last. So let's see what happens here. I know it's going kind of fast, but we got to get through these cases. I know my countercoach viewers, you don't want to sit through a long case. There's a lot of shaking and dancing there, cleaning up. But now what do you do with that big plaque there? Try grabbing that cortex. Okay. Uh, nice and easy. Can you peel that plaque off? You may want to just not, or maybe do a posterior rexus. Not sure what's happening back there. Let's see. Here's some viscoelastic. That's a good idea. Oh, now the capsule looks like it's opened up a bit. Yeah, there's a big hole in the capsule now. I just get the lens in at this point. I don't know if I'd mess with that anymore. Get the lens in. I like that maneuver. Extra pairs and to access some subincisional cortex just with a 27 gauge cannula. Very nice. Here comes the lens. Single piece of acrylic, toric lens even, going here in the capsular bag. And hopefully this patient has good macular function. Get that toric lens lined up where you need it to. Kind of flush out some of the viscoelastic. I think, you know, you got lucky. That fibrotic area around that break in the capsule is kind of holding things together so you don't have a large split of the bag. So this lens is nicely and securely placed within the capsular bag. That looks pretty good to me, actually. So here we go. A little more maybe flushing out some viscoelastic. I don't know if I'd be too aggressive in going behind the optic to remove too much viscoelastic. Sealing up the incisions here, okay. And then, okay, a little bit more gentle aspiration of viscoelastic here. I'd drop my settings in half, half the flow, half the vacuum, half the infusion pressure. Nice and easy. And here at the end, I like the injection of BSS at the same time as coming out of the eye. Don't let that AC collapse. That's a good idea. 
And yeah, I'd do a YAG laser later for the patient. I'd wait at least a month, then do a YAG laser capsulotomy. Patient should do great. Wow, what a fun and tough case. Remember, retina rounds is coming, coming March 2025. Less than a month from now, you will have a second beautiful channel to watch. You're going to love it. Retinarounds.com, coming soon. Check it out.